one of the problems was, where do you get these cars to do? They couldn't give me a car. I, di I didn't own a car. I don't think that the competition department owned a car other than when we did the endurance races. But guys like Charlie Gates, who was a Porsche driver, and I'd raced against him when it was my TR3, and I talked him into buying a new TR4. I said, you buy the car, he said, and I'll, and I'll take care of it, and I'll do the modifications and all that kind of stuff. So we became a team. And that's where a lot of the testing was done, is that in his car. And then Carl Swanson, and Carl Swanson, uh, I said, well, no, that, that was a company. They gave me a GT6 to, to do that with. The first Spitfire was done with Ed Barker. It was his car. He bought the car and he did a lot of the work and we talked about it and he did just yeoman's work as far as I'm concerned. Uh, anyway, uh, not only was it the cars, but how do you get them to the racetrack? Each one of my drivers drove their own pickup truck or, the, or their car, their station wagon or whatever they had, and their own tra their trailer, not mine, they put the car on it and we went to the racetrack. I paid for the entry fees and paid for the hotels and the, and the food, and, and that was about all that the competition department was paying for. And these two guys had to take off work to do this. Now I came through, I always did the tuning. And I always checked the ignition. I always checked the, the spark. I was responsible for the tuning, but they are the ones who did that. If they needed a clutch changed or they needed an engine changed or whatever it might be that, that had to be done, Jimmy Dittmore or, or Don Devendorf or whoever it was who was in that car, he did the work. He did the majority of it. But it was, we had a gang. And it was great because if somebody's in trouble, everybody work on that car. There, there was an interest in meeting in London. I went over uh, and I was asked to come to, to uh, Coventry and uh, we went down to London. There was going to be this big meeting in this, in this hotel. Now at this point, uh, uh, Stokes had taken over. And, uh, and I had no idea what was going on. They had the, the European uh, managers there. They had uh, Webster, of course, was there. They had the vice president and president of the US. Uh, if I, perhaps they had the Canadian president was there. It was a big deal. And they had me. You know, what's, a, you know, what, what's this, you know, the skinny kid from California doing it? I don't know. But uh, somebody valued my opinion. So we got down to the business part of it. And so it's going around the table. Well, what should we do about that? And then I, I found out why I, my, my opinion might be there. First off, that I would say what my opinion was. And uh, it, they said, well, what do you think about the, the, another car, another engine, or what, whatever we might do, do it for the American market? So we're talking around, and, and it's going around the, the thing. And, and pretty soon they start, well, you know, the four-cylinder engine, everybody wants a big four. That we need. And so we're talking about making a big, a two-and-a-half liter, a 2.8 liter uh, TR four-cylinder engine for the, new, for the new TR. And it got around to me, and finally said, and Stokes is right across from me at the table, and, and he, he, it's pretty neat. He and I got on very well, and uh, he has been condemned for not liking competition, but not in my eyes. But anyway, uh, he looked and said, well, Kasten, what do you think? I said, I think it's an error. I, said, I told him, I, I said, they, that the one thing that people don't want is a big four. I said, they're tired of it. The Austin Healy had a four and they went to a six. We've got a four and we should go to the six cylinder. We've got a six cylinder engine. And then people are looking for something better, something more modern, and you already got it. And that's, that I think was one of the things that pushed that over the, over the side. I really do think that uh, my, because, it, because everybody had already voted for a four. And then I came on and was just diametrically opposite. And I think somebody listened because we got a six. And so this is the famous K car. Okay? Yes, yes, it is indeed. A lot of hard work went into this, and uh, the people that restored are better than ever. And it looks as good as it did the day we finished it. It goes fast, and I mean, it eats other cars alive, and that's what it's supposed to do. Well, that, that's just an, another thing, you know. That was another project that, on top of everything else. We built it in 1967. 
Pete Brock and I were good friends, and we, we talked about this kind of thing. You know, do another car, do a car um, on a production and chassis and so on, and that maybe something that uh, the factory would want to pick up and all that. And so it's always just kind of casual conversation. I mean, we didn't beat it to death or, or anything like that, but it was always a thought. And this one time I got this notice that, uh, or we got a phone call, and they said they'd like me to come to Coventry for something, and I don't remember what. And uh, and I said, well, okay, I had about an hour's notice is all to, to catch a flight to be there at time and, and all that kind of business. And uh, I said, perfect time to call Pete. So I called Pete and I said, Can, I need a sketch. You got to give me a sketch of what you got. And he said, okay. So, you know, a half hour later, I don't know, it might have been an hour, whatever it was. Anyway, Pete came over and a piece of paper, oh, probably two feet long and, and a foot wide, and he had this beautiful line drawing on it of what this car was going to be based on a TR250 chassis. And part of it was, you know, the engine was moved back 11 inches and, and all that. And it was pretty zippy looking, I'll tell you. And had a meeting with the managing director and, uh, to talk about other things and so on, and we got down to this, and I said, well, here's the thing I've got. I said, I, what I'd like to do is get a budget to build this car. And I, sh I showed him this, this sheet of paper, which I wouldn't let out of my hands. And he said, well, that's you know nice, but what are you going to do with that? And I said, well, we're going to build this car, and I said, it's going to be based on a TR250, on the st stock chassis, stock suspension, uh, all of that, and, and the engine, and, and then we're going to run it at the 12 hours of Sebring, and I've already got a magazine cover for it. So we'll we'll have that going in the door. I've got I've got twenty five thousand dollars worth of advertising before before because it's going to be Triumph TR two fifty, and uh, I said you've got a magazine covered already. I said okay, we'll give you the twenty five thousand dollars. I'm thinking twenty five thousand dollars, and I've got to build this car and race it for this twenty five grand. Well, it started because the guys in Vintage were not really racing for trophies, so they didn't have trophies. And I'd gone to a few races, and I really enjoyed them, and the guys were having so much fun with their cars, I said, well, geez, why don't I get a real trophy, and we'll do it on an annual basis all over the country, one, you know, one place one time, one, another place another. We started off in Mossport, Canada, as a matter of fact, we went from there to California, to Watkins Glen, to we were down here in 2005, and back to uh, Hallett, Oklahoma, back to California. And anyway, the idea is that uh, it's not about, if it's a triumph race, but it's not about he who wins the race necessarily. Winning a race does not necessarily mean you win the cup. Uh, it's about your attitude about vintage racing, uh, the presentation of your car, and I'm the judge who says which car gets the car, which, which driver gets it. And there's one other rule, you're not allowed to win it two years in a row, which I think is important. Anyway, so that's, that's the essence of it, and uh, that'll be all based on the Triumph race tomorrow. And he takes it home for a year and brings it back the next year. <laughs> and here it is. This has been a hell of a show. Yeah. But there's one car that was, you know, it's got to be outstanding. And that's Randy Williams. It's All right, Randy. Uh,